All right, guys, so in the next video I do, I want to show you how you can make a 3D map in QGIS. So in this video, what we'll do is we'll get prepped for that by doing some raster terrain analysis that will prep us to make a 3D map in the next video. So stick around for some terrain analysis uh, that will prep you for the 3D mapping. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to add in a digital elevation model. And I'm going to use this DEM we've been using for a few of our analyses so far. Um, that's not the one I want. I have one down here. This one. This is going to be clipped to a watershed boundary. So let me go back into my layers and we'll just remove this here. And then I'm going to just zoom to this layer so it fills up the screen. Okay, so here you can see I have a digital elevation model of a watershed. And this is one I use in a lot of my videos. This is the Temple Fork watershed. It's up in northern Utah. And so what these pixel values represent is elevation above sea level uh, in meters. And so this, this area here is 181 meters above sea level. And up here we're 2,630 meters above sea level. Okay. So you can do some really cool stuff with um, digital elevation models or DEMs. And one of them is to create a hillshade. And so if you're not familiar with a hillshade, a hillshade just kind of gives you um, a photo of what the topography looks like. Uh, and so we'll go ahead and run it, and when you see it, you might get an idea of what it is, and then I'll talk about why we might want a hillshade. So the first thing to run a hillshade, we can come into raster here, and we can come into analysis, and we have this hillshade button, and it's in the GDAL algorithm box. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on Hillshade. And you can see my input is already selected DEM and I only have one band, my band number. You can leave these defaults the same. Uh, if you're in the southern hemisphere, you might want to change the azimuth of light. Um, so if you're otherwise, the shading might look backwards. So you can run it. If your shading looks off, you can change it. Okay. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come down to my save file. I'm going to change this. I'm going to just save it to a file. And this will pop up in my dialog here. And so let's go back to here. I think we want to go back into my temp data. And I think we had my outputs here. Here's my, my DEM TEF. So I already have a heel shade. We'll just name this heel shade 2. So you can see what it looks like. And I'll click save. And once we have that, we can go ahead and we can click run. This is going to process the algorithm, which might take just a minute. The bigger your raster is, the longer this takes. So we're finished. I can close this. And you can see that it's added the seal shade in here. Okay. So you can see there's a canyon here, and there's a big canyon here, and we've got a little more mild topography out in this area. Now, I'll show you something real cool with the hill shade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this hill shade and drag it below my DEM. And this can really help our symbology out. So I'll drag it below here. I'm going to change my DEM symbology now. So I'm going to open this up by double-clicking or right-click and go to Properties. Come to Symbology. And the first thing I'll do is I'm going to change this to Single Band Pseudo Color. And then I'm going to use this color ramp here that I've developed myself, which is my elevation green, brown, white color band, um, color ramp. And if you want to see how to make this color ramp, I have a video that I'll link in the cards here and in the description below um, that will tell you how to make a custom color ramp in QGIS. Um, so I'm going to do that. And then the next thing, I'm going to come to transparency. And I'm going to make the global opacity, I'm just going to make it 60%. Okay. And I'll come over here, I'll click Apply all those things. And now you can see that that hill shade shows through, and you have the elevation values over the top of this, but you now also have that, that hill shade underneath that kind of makes that topography pop out. So that's a cool little symbology trick you can, you can try. And that's what we'll use. We'll use this DEM and the hill shade to make a really cool looking 3D map in the next video. But while we're on the topic, I want to go through some more um, terrain analysis with you. And so go back into raster. 
and come back into my analysis tools. And two more um, common terrain analysis tools that we use are slope and aspect. And so we'll just go through these real quick. So let's run the slope. This is also going to take a DEM input, which I have here. We're going to give it the first band. And we're just going to leave the ratio the same. We want the ratio to be one to one, so we don't want uh, any stretching there. And so slope expresses percent instead of degrees. So there are two ways to do slope. There are degrees and percentages. Okay, um, You're probably most familiar with percentages maybe, but degrees is just going to give you the angle between 0 and 90 in vertical. Um, we'll do this as degrees, so we're going to get values that range from 0 to infinity. Um, we do it in percent, so we'll leave it like that. Um, this other option is to compute the edges. So the slope algorithm uses a neighborhood search, and I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to close this real quick. I'm going to zoom in uh, on a really close to an area of my pixel here, on my map. So you'll notice here, if I turn my hill shade off, and then turn it back on, you can see the hill shade did not get computed for these edge cells. And that's because most of these raster analysis tools use a 3x3 three three moving window to do a calculation. And so what that looks like is they have one cell here, one cell here, one cell here. So there's three rows, and I have a cell here, a cell here, and a cell here, and there's three columns. And so it will take this area in here, and it will perform a calculation that involves all nine of those cells to get a value for the middle cell. And if there are no data values, so like this cell right here, there are no data values for three of those cells, and so it won't perform the calculation there, which often isn't a big deal. Sometimes it is. So with the slope, let's go back um, to our raster analysis and go back to slope. This is just saying it will compute the edges. Even if there aren't nine cells with data in them, you can compute the edges, but you might have some anomalies at those edges because of the no data values. So just be aware of that. I'm not going to compute the edges. I'm going to save to a temporary file. Or oh, sorry, I'm going to save to a file. And we'll save it in the same spot here, and I'll call this slope. And we'll call it PER so we know it's percent slope. And I'll click save. And then here I'll click run. Once again, here's my output. So I can close this. Oops. And so you can see my slope values here range from 0 to 53 percent, okay? Or maybe I did this in degrees. I'll have to go back and check what the default is. Sorry, guys, I may have just led you straight a little bit there. Let's go back to slope. Okay, so this is in degrees. Sorry, I named that file wrong. Um, but this is, so this is in degrees slope, and so 0 to 53 so let's go ahead and we can go change the symbology on this. Um, I generally like to um, make my slope kind of uh, in bright colors here. So maybe green, red, yellow might be a good one for this. And I want my red to be high slope, so I'm going to come in and I'm going to invert the color ramp. And then I'll click OK. And so there you can see that those red areas show you where the high slopes are. And you can do the same thing with this as with the DEM on a heel shade. You can come in and we can change our um, transparency again. So I'll make this 60%. And then you can kind of get an idea of where those slope values occur. All right. So let's go ahead and do the aspect. And if you're not familiar with aspect, what aspect is, is it, gives you the, it gives you the direction a slope is facing. And we can get that a little bit with our hill shade, right? We can see this slope faces south, this one faces north, you know, this one faces southwest, this one faces northwest. So we can kind of come in and look at that, but if we do aspect, it'll give us a numerical value in degrees of the direction a slope faces. So once again, all we need here is our DEM input, our first band. We can do a trigonometric angle instead of azimuth. We want azimuth. Um, we can get our flat areas, so areas that are completely flat. We can make them zero instead of negative, instead of no data. So this is a no data value. I'll make those zero. 
We can do the same thing with compute edges, but I'm going to just leave that default. So let's come down here and we'll save to a file and we'll name this aspect and we'll click save. We'll click run and here's our output. Okay, so now we're done. All right. And so these areas are flat. There are no data values over here, but they're also flat values. So let's just go ahead and take a look. It should be zero there. Okay, and that's a low value. All right. So let's go ahead and let's uh, break these up a little differently. So let's go to symbology and we'll do single band pseudo color again. Um, this time, if we divide this up into like eight equal classes, we should be able to see uh, the directions a little better. So let's do eight classes, click classify. Okay, so those are broken up there pretty evenly. And I'm going to change my color here. I'm not exactly sure what I want this to be yet, but let's take a look. I can try I like the Inferno color. So that gives us no data. Those will be slopes to face to the uh, northeast. Okay. Okay, let's give that a try. It'd be nice if this was we could adjust these manually, but we'll just leave them. They'll be roughly all okay. So click OK here. All right. So now you can see which the direction these slopes face. So a value of zero is going to be no data, and then we get these dark values are going to face to the northeast. Um, these values over here are going to face to the northwest. Okay, these values are going to be facing to the south right in here. And so there you can just kind of see the direction those slopes are facing. All right, so those are some of the terrain analysis tools that you can use here in QGIS. Um, pretty easy to use, uh, pretty intuitive to use. If you have questions about them, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to get to, to those questions. Um, if you have suggestions for any other tutorials, let me know. And next week what we'll use is we'll use the DEM and the Hillshade to create a 3D map in QGIS. Um, and it actually looks really cool and it's really easy to do. Um, so stick around, subscribe so you, you're notified when next week's video comes out, and you'll be able to see how to make that 3D map. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have a good day. If you have questions, again, please let me know.